Y'all doing all right? Yes. Y'all doing all right? Good. Okay. Um, I want you to turn to the book of St. John, and we are looking at, let me get my Bible, we are looking at the fifth verse and the ninth, uh, fifth chapter, verse 19. So while you guys go ahead and turn there, I will pray. Father, we just thank you for this day, dear Lord. We thank you, God, for um, another opportunity to come together, God, as brothers and sisters, as your children, your sons and your daughters, dear Lord, just to be in your presence, God. We thank you for what has taken place thus far. We thank you for the prayer. We thank you for the worship. We thank you for the praise. We thank you for the encouragement right now, dear Lord. And we ask, God, that you just continue to move in this service, dear Lord. We pray right now, God, that you just continue to open up our hearts, God, to receive the word that is coming forth, God. Strengthen us in our spirit, dear Lord. Open our spiritual ears. Open our spiritual eyes, God, to, to hear and to see what you are speaking to us today, dear Lord. We thank you right now, God. We give you all glory. All honor and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So we are in the book of St. John chapter 5. And we are reading verse 19. I'm reading from the um, English Standard Version. So Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, the Son can do nothing of his own accord but only what he sees the Father doing. For whatever the Father does, that the Son does likewise. Amen. God's word is blessed. So you've heard of, um, I don't know, maybe if the, the younger kids haven't, but old school, monkey see, monkey do. And it's the expression that's describing someone who imitates another person's actions, whether it's good or bad, simply by having watched them before. And of course, the perfect example are our little ones right here. The young people, they, you know, it's like monkey see, monkey do, whether it's something that their friend does, they mimic something their friend does, um, an older sibling, you know, a teacher, a parent, someone. It's, they are mimicking what they're doing that they've seen someone else do. So the overall theme or the focus for today's message that we're going to be grasping from this verse right here is we must get past the point of being spectators and become imitators okay we must get out of the pew and get into action so if if you want to title this message or you know kind of write down just something that grabs at you title this biting my style Biting my style, and for and for for those you know who are in the old school generation, biting means copying. Okay, so biting my style. That's um, I want to give you just a couple of definitions of, of two words that are part is spectator, because we need to understand what a spectator is, and we need to know what an imitator is in order to stop being a spectator and start being an imitator. Amen. So the definition of spectator is a person who looks on or watches, onlooker, an observer. Another definition is a person who is present at and views a spectacle, display, or the like. And an example of this is a member of an audience. Okay. So spectator, a person who looks on or watches, an onlooker or observer. Now let's look at what an imitator is, or, or to imitate. And I like these, there, there are a few definitions and, and they're really good and it really helps to understand what it is to be like to imitate. Imitate, to follow or endeavor to follow as a model or example. Okay, another definition, to mimic or impersonate, to make a copy of, reproduce closely, and the last definition, to have or assume the appearance of, mm. simulate resemblance. I'll be those again, the definitions for imitate. To follow or endeavor to follow as a model or example. To mimic, impersonate, okay? 
to make a copy of, reproduce closely, to have or assume the appearance of, simulate, resemble. So now, going back to our focal text, in John um, 5.19, basically, if Jesus did, so must we. Jesus is our example. He's our blueprint and he's our role model. So if Jesus did it, so then we should do it as well. The reason that there's no salvation, no deliverance, no breakthrough, or no, no revival is because there's too many spectators and, not, and no imitators. There's too many people just sitting and watching, sitting, observing, and not enough people who are mimicking, who are impersonating. Okay, y'all, y'all, y'all following with me? Yes. The in my Bible, that you know how some Bibles have like um, titles, like subheadings for different um, parts of the chapter. My type, my title says the authority of Jesus. Okay, and because watch this, because Jesus lives in us. The same authority that he has been given, we too have the same authority. Y'all, y'all, you understand that? Because, yes. because the the authority that Jesus has, because he lives in us, the same authority that he's been given, we too have that same authority. And I'm going to go into depth into that in a little later. Okay. <clears throat> What I want to do right here is focus on the contradictions that come with spectating. So remember I said, for one of the definitions, spectating, a person who is present at or views a spectacle, display or the like. Let's turn to um, Matthew 28, because I need y'all to, to understand something about the contradiction for spectating. Y'all should already kind of know where I'm about to go. This is a very familiar Matthew 28, starting with verse 19. Yes. So here you have it. Matthew 8, 28, verse 19. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. So here's where the contradiction comes. There are two key words in this passage that contradict spectating. Go and make. So therefore, that means we must be active, right? So Jesus is telling us to go and to make. He didn't just say sit and watch. Go and make, so that means we have to get up, go out, and be active and do something. So that contradicts spectating right there. If you um, go down to the to the beginning of the very next verse, verse 20, he also says, and this, this correlates to what are we as believers supposed to do. In verse 20 it says, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. That right there sounds like something else we have to do. We have to be active. You can't just, you can watch somebody else teach, but Jesus is like, no, I commanded you to teach, to go, to be active. Okay, that's what we are supposed to do. If you um, turn with me to Matthew, and you can all just, you know, definitely write these, these scriptures down because this is important. The con it shows, you know, showing the contradiction of spectating. Matthew chapter 10, and we are looking at verses 6 through 8. Matthew 10, verses 6 through 8. And again, but go, there goes that word right there, go, so that means that we have to do something. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel and proclaim as you go, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You receive without pain, give without pay. This is basically our job description as believers. 
Okay, this is what we as the called out body of believers, born again believers, the church, this is our job description. So when you accept Christ and, and, and into your into your heart and, and you become a believer, that's the job description. If you say, oh, well, what am I supposed to do? That right there. Okay. You're supposed to go out. You're supposed to, to make disciples. Go out and teach the word. You're supposed to, what do we say in Matthew 10? Um, go to the lost sheep. Mm -hmm. Proclaim. Now, here's the thing. You can't, if, if you have work, I'm not, I am not telling you to go to work and be casting demons out of nobody. Okay. I know you may want to, but there's a time and there's a place for everything. But, and what did, what, what did it say in verse 7? Proclaim as you go, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Anyone can do that anywhere, whether at school, whether at their job. You can always share the gospel. You can always tell others about John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. We can all do that. So there's, if there's ever a question of what am I supposed to be doing as a believer, that's what it is. Um, I was sharing with my husband, Pastor, on Friday, um, Friday evening before Bible study. I have a friend, um, his name is Dixon, and he lives in Brooklyn. And um, I happened to see on Facebook, he was doing a Facebook Live, and he was on the bus, and the title of his, of his live was On My Way to Philly. So I kind of, you know, I kind of talked to him. I was like, well, why am I just finding out that you're coming to Philly? And he was telling me that, you know, he was coming to do ministry. And this was a, he chronicled the whole journey. And, and I, I'm, this correlates to, to, you know, the doing part. He chronicled the whole, you know, journey of, you know, riding the bus and being in the car. And then he um, even, you know, had us like watch him order something to eat. So while he was waiting for his food, he went out, you know, he stood out in front of a restaurant and he, you know, ran into the DVD man. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the DVD man, oh, I got this DVD, blah, blah. He's like, well, do you have any Christian movies? Because I'm kind of, you know, he's like, I don't like, put, you know, putting certain things yeah. in my spirit. So he was like, oh, no, but, you know, I could get you the passions of the Christ and all this. He was like, well, you know, if you have it right now, I'll buy it. He was like, no, but I can get it. So that right there was the, was the opportunity for, for sharing. Because the, the gentleman was saying about how after the movie was over, he, he and his girlfriend sat in the theater for 20 minutes, just like, wow. And the, the seed, so what, what Dixon did was he started to water upon the seed that was already planted when he went to watch the movie. So he began to, to say, well, you know, the, the gentleman, his name was G. He was saying, yeah, and, and, and what God did, and just, you know, the different things that he, he um, got from the movie. So Dixon began to build upon that. He said, yes, you know, God laid down his life. And, and the point of this all was, he said, all right, brother, let me pray for you. Let, let me, so he was, he was, he didn't have to just be in the church to, to have the opportunity to share. He was, he was sensitive and because he had the authority that's living inside of him, he was able to tap in to what was going on and he was able to to you know allow God to lead him and, and pray for this man. Amen. Do, do y'all understand? Y'all understand that that correlation to just you know not just spectating but going going on. Amen? Amen. Amen. So the question that we should all um, kind of be asking ourselves is this how long before we allow spectating to turn into imitating? How long before spectating turns into imitating? How long before we mimic, simulate, or resemble what we see? Perfect example. I, and I know, you know we got some, some ladies in here who, who had um, examples of grandmama and mama and auntie and sisters who could throw down in the kitchen. Yes. So, there were times as growing up, you may have watched grandma and your mom cook and just sit there and just, okay, watch her put a pinch of salt and a dab of and do all of this. And then guess what? Oh, grandma's sick. You got next. It's your turn. Yes. And it's, you're like, I don't know what to do. Yes, you do. You've been there watching. It's your turn to mimic. It's your turn to simulate. It's your turn to do it may not taste yes. exactly how grandma or mom made it uh -huh. because they have their own essence of love, but you still know how to follow the pattern because you've been there 
watching. Uh -huh. That's that's what we have to get to. We have to get to the point where, okay, you know what? I can do this. And because I don't want y'all to just think I'm telling stories, I've got scripture. So I got scripture to back it up. So bam, it's not just me telling a bunch of stories. We got scripture. So let's go to the book of Second Kings. And we're going to the second chapter. And I'm going to Second Kings. The second chapter, starting at verse 8. Amen, amen. All right. So the book, Second Kings chapter 2, verse 8. Then Elijah took his cloak and rolled it up and struck the water, and the water was parted to the one side and to the other, till the two of them could go over on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Ask what I shall do for you before I am taken away from you. And Elisha said, Please let there be a double portion of your spirit on me. And he said, You have asked a hard thing, yet... If you see me as I am being taken from you, it shall be so for you. But if you do not see me, it shall not be so. And as they still went on and talked, behold, chariots of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. And Elisha saw it and cried, My father, my father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. And he saw him no more. Then he took off his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. And he took up the cloak of Elijah that had fallen from him and went back and stood on the bank of the Jordan. Then he took the cloak of Elijah that had fallen from him and struck the water saying, where is the Lord, the God of Elijah? And when he struck the water, the water was parted to the one side and to the other. And Elisha went over. Elisha knew to strike the water with the mantle. Why? Because he saw Elijah do it. Elisha observed Elijah, then mimicked him. Yes. He saw what his his mentor, his 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 um, teacher did. He observed. He said, "Okay, you know what?" And he and he even said. Where is the Lord, God of Elijah? He's my God too. So the same thing that Elijah did, Elisha did. He observed what he did and then he mimicked him. Okay? Y'all good? Y'all good with that? But guess what? If y'all don't believe me, I got another scripture. I got another one to tell. <laughs> Turn to the book of Joshua chapter 2. Yeah, we just finished Joshua in Bible study. Amen. Book of Joshua, chapter 2. We're just going to the very first verse. Going to read verse 1. And Joshua, the son of Nun, sent two men secretly from Shittim as spies, saying, Go view the land, especially Jericho. And they went and came to the house of a prostitute named Rahab and lodged there. So, do you think Joshua just made up this idea? No. no. He didn't make up this idea because he had an example before. Just write this down. Write this scripture down. We're not going to go there. Numbers 13, 1 through 25. Joshua knew to do the same thing because he saw Moses do it with the 12 spies to scatter out the land of Canaan. In Numbers 13, 1 through 25. So Joshua did. He observed Moses. When Moses sent out the 12 spies, and then he mimicked the exact same thing. He said, you know what? But but even with that, Joshua had wisdom because he said, well, I'm just only going to send out two spies who I trust are not going to come and have a contradicting, conflicting report because that's what happened with Moses. But he mimicked. He observed what Moses did. He learned from it. He mimicked it, and he, and he used the wisdom and applied it in his way. Amen? Amen. Amen. Um, being an imitator, children are the biggest imitators, and you know sometimes that they're they're funny and, and it's it's just awesome. But and if they're so, a lot of times they're just so sweet and so innocent about it. 
and that is such a beautiful thing and Jesus even talks about it in um, Matthew 18 3 just saying how we should be like children when coming to him just with that with that innocence and that faith and that that humility but as far as children being the the, the best imitators when um the the church that pastor grew up in there was you know we had a we had a, a plethora of, of young people as, as well. There was a bunch of young people, and what they did was, um, whenever we would have like afternoon service or, or something like that, in between, they would be like, "Okay, who's who's this person? Who's this shout? Who's uh -huh. this? Who's this person?" They they would imitate, and 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 they would right. They would play church and they would pretend, you know, all right. Can you can you guess who this shout is? And they would dance like the person, and they'd be like, "Oh, that's my mom!" And oh. And I mean, a lot of times you'd be like, wow, that's pretty good. And then they, because they're so observant and because they know, they say, no, 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 wait. You you didn't kick your heel like they do or you didn't do your, like they have it yeah. because they've observed, they've watched, they study. So now they're able to mimic. That's how, that's how we should be. At first they acted as the onlookers. Then they were able to impersonate the said person and, and I don't ever think anyone ever got past them. Correct. Because they they were like, no, that's not it. No, it's this. Omari does. Omari no, does. With the dip. <laughs> but, but praise God. So, so because of being the observant in everything, that's what, that's how we should be. Here's the goal. Okay? The goal of, 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 of it all. Obs our observation should turn to application. All right. Our observation <laughs> should turn into application. Turn to um, the book of James, chapter 1, and we're looking at verses 22 to 24. The book of James, chapter 1, verses 22 and 24. But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. It's time that we have to stop marveling at others feeding the multitude of two fish and five loaves and begin praying for our own multitude to feed. That's that's what that's what that is right there. We have to Pastor said it this morning in, in prayer. The harvest is plenty. The harvest is plenty. There's a multitude out there. The har it's the laborers that are few. There are, there are, we all have people who are assigned to us, but they're starving because we're too busy spectating and not imitating. So there's that multitude of that, you know, we're, we're looking at others and saying, wow, they're feeding all this many people with, the, with two fish and five loaves, but what about those that are assigned to us? They're, they're starving, they're waiting for us to be like, okay, you know what? that same thing I can do. How it's it's not that hard. So so that that's the goal. And it's not like we don't know what to do. Here's the here's the, the challenge and we, we've talked about this becoming like spiritual fat spiritual fatness. Long term observation equates to the know it all. Mm. The the know it all. They have all the right answers, they know everything but that's it. That's it. They aren't doing what they learn. They're not. They're not applying. It's just receiving the information, just observing, and that's it. That's a problem. Jesus, and, and this is a problem here. Jesus always had a crowd around him, right? Yeah. Everywhere he went, he always had people flocking around him. Majority of the people were spectators. Ma majority of the people wanted to watch the, you know, him do the miracles and, and 
heal and raise. A lot of people just wanted to see that. Those, those are the ones who wanted to see the miracles, but the, the imitators were few. There were few imitators who were with Jesus. Now here it is. That's a problem if you're a believer. Amen. Amen. That is a problem if you're a believer. We should not be spectating. Yes. We should not just be onlookers watching on the sideline. Amen. And we have no excuse. We honestly have no excuse. I'm going to read uh, John 5, 9, 19 through 20 in the voice translation because I really love how, and, and if you want, you can put it up, Pastor, but definitely write this down. And this is, you know, we encourage if you have like, you know, Google or even a Bible app to look at different translations of uh -huh. the different verses because a lot of times the, the different translations, because I don't always understand King James. Yes. The these, the thou's, the thus, the those, no. I don't, I don't get down with that. That, but, you know, certain translations, like the voice translations <laughs> and the message, they kind of just really make it like cut and dry, like, oh. So this is John 5, 19 through 20 in the voice. The truth is that the son does nothing on his own. All these actions are led by the father. Watch this. The son watches the father closely, then mimics the work of the father. The father loves the son. So he does not hide his actions. Instead, he shows him everything. And the things not yet revealed by the Father will dumbfound you. So basically, right there, God, God will show us what to do. And, and we are to, he's already, it's right in here. It's right in, it's right in our Bible. That's our blueprint. We have no excuse as to why we aren't doing it. We have the Bible for a reason. We have leaders for a reason. We gather with our, our brothers and sisters for a reason. The reason is so we gain the confidence to go from spectating to imitating. Right? That when when we when we study our Bible, you know, we, we take down notes and it encourages us because all that's happened in the in, in here can still happen. Yeah. We can we can still go and heal the sick. We can still go and cast demons out. We can still raise the dead because God did. He's not saying just because you know the the, the book is complete. He's not saying okay that's it. It's just it's just a, it's not just a story to people who aren't believers. It's just a story. But to us, this is our life. This is our example. This is our. Um, our job description book. This is what we go to when we don't understand something. This is our reference. So when we don't have, when we have a question like, well, what did Joshua do when this happened? Let me go, let me go back and, and see. This is our reference. This is important in how we gain the confidence from going to spectating to imitating. Have you um ever watched a movie and you kind of, you know, sit there like, wow, I wish I could be in that movie. You know, so sometimes I think about that and it's just like, but we are. But not, not to say that this is a movie, but we are definitely in this in this thing called called life, this this picture that God has, has allowed us to be a part of. And the the last scripture that I'm gonna give you is John 14 verse 12. Truly, truly I tell you. Whoever believes in me will also do the work that I have that I am doing. He will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father. This movie has no end. And the end will be when Christ returns. I mean, of course. But just because and, and, and right here, God Jesus is saying that, yeah, I'm going back to the Father, but guess what? There's still work to be done. And y'all are going to do that work. So because he's going back to the Father, that doesn't mean the work has stopped. He, we have to start reproducing closely. So greater works will be done through us and through our, our children and through our children's children and our children's children's children until Christ comes back. So we have work to do. There's And, and our example is God. And Everything that, that we've seen him do, we can do. 
we have the authority yes. to do. He's given us that authority. So what we have to do is we have to say, okay, you know what? I've learned enough. I've, I've observed long enough. I can go and, 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 and pray for this person. I can go and, and um, give out, you know, feed the multitude in, in my area, in my community. I can go out. All the things that I've seen Jesus do, that Jesus has empowered me to do, that I've seen my leaders and I've seen other members of the, the, the body do, it's time that I start doing those things because there's, there's people who God has specifically assigned to us. There are people who God is like, okay, you know what? This, this, this group right here, that's yours. No one else can, can truly reach them the way that you can. There, there are going to be some who can be like, you know, be able to, to speak to them, but because of, of your journey, of your story, you'll really be able to like pull their heartstrings and really be able to, to break down the walls and, and, and really get into where they have everyone else at an arm's yes. length. But then you're that person that, yeah. I'm in your face. Yeah. And you're like, oh, how'd you do that? How'd you do that? Because I've been assigned, you've been assigned to me. So we have to get to the point that we stop just watching and just observing and on looking and just want to get in. You, you ever double dutch? I, I really wish I could jump, but I, I think I front. So you know, I, yeah, with you know, turn. I'm like, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, okay, sight. But but I, I want to mimic. I, I'm, I'm trying to mimic. I'm trying to see what I see everyone else do. But but that's but that's how we should be when it comes to the things of God. Like, okay, I've I've observed long enough. I I I, I know. You know, even if you have that one scripture, one or two scriptures, if you have a, a prayer that you know that's worked for you, all right. Let me get in on that. Let let me start resembling and, and acting like Christ and like my leaders. Amen? Amen. Amen. So let's, let's let's really just think and just say, you know what? How long? How much longer am I going to expect this? How much longer am I just going to be an onlooker? Be going to observe? When, when am I going to start mimicking? When am I going to start doing? When am I going to start applying the things that I've been taught, the things that, that Jesus has empowered you to do? Amen? Amen. 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 Y'all were, were blessed. I hope you were encouraged by by the word.